Hello and welcome once again to Blackpool for the final of the men's team event in the Embassy World Championships of 2003. Can Ireland's best stop the mighty English over 15 frames? This to decide the title, it's England up against Ireland. It promises to be a tremendous match. Let's just recap on what happened in the semi-finals. England coming through very comfortably against Wales. Ireland is a real thriller against Scotland. Well, with me for this one, as ever, the president of the World 8 Ball Pool Federation, Joe Franco. And Joe, the obvious question is, can Ireland stop England? Yes, they can, but uh, they'll need to draw on all reserves and uh, all their passion uh, to try and defeat uh, an England team which uh, appears to have no weak links. The Irish are, are very passionate. They've been singing songs all morning. The, uh, the Barmy Irish Army, they really enjoy themselves, don't they? Look, they started before all the formalities. Uh, <laughs> they, they're just this great passion. If they win, they're going to hear them from Ireland. Absolutely. Let's just take a look at the, uh, the lineup. What players stand out for you here, Joe? Well, as I said, uh, the English side have got no weak links. They've all uh, been here and done it before. Ireland are going to have to have a good start from John Collum. Robert Brady's going to play a bigger part than what he did in the semi-final. Uh, John McMahon and Tony Holgate are going to have to put, play some uh, steady uh, putouts outs like they did in the semi-final. They had good semis. And England kicking off straight away with their big guns, the reigning world champion, Jason Twist. The captain for the England side, Lee Kenzel. I guarantee you one thing, every frame that Ireland win, we will be hearing, hearing lots of singing. They love to sing a song or two. Are they going to be singing in an hour's time? That's a big question. I'd like to think that uh, they will have something to think to sing about as we get close to the uh, closing <laughs> stages, um, because you know it really adds to the atmosphere and, and makes for a wonderful uh, conclusion to the championship. Now England have won this event five times. Tony Holgate smiling. He's the inspiration for the Irish side. Jason Twist already there with his cue to get this match underway. The reigning world champion promises to be a great match. Over 15 frames, I'll hand you over to our commentary team of Tracy James, Chris Mellon, and Jim Weich. It's the Embassy World Team Final. The much fancied and formidable side of England up against the emotional side of Ireland. And I feel that they hit it right on the head. They've got to try and keep those Irish away from drawing on the emotion that they do. And a great start this from John Cullum. Chris Melling and Tracy James joining me in the com box to watch this one, and I'm sure we're gonna enjoy this, but what a tall order this is for Ireland, Chris. Yeah, tough match for Ireland, this. Playing England, England have actually got six of the top eight players in their team in the world. Ireland can't afford to make a mistake in this match. Us England will be straight on the backs, straight into action, and pinch the frames. 30 seconds. Now, Tracy, you and I were talking a little earlier about uh, the, the semi-final matches, and certainly Ireland's going to have to play a little better than they did against Scotland if they're going to see a path through here against England. I do tend to agree, Jim. I think that England's firing at the moment, although the Barmy Army, as they have been called, they're playing all right at the moment. I think they've got a good game ahead of them. Well, the first miss coming to Ireland, and that allows the reigning world champion, Jason Twist, into the table. One more look at it. Jason looking at the red to the center pocket. What a way to start it out. The reigning world champion to kick things off for your team. Does it get any better than that? Ireland just made an early mistake there from John. Good chance. Just a little bit of early nerves there. First frame it is to be expected. Jason looks in good form here though. Looks as though he's going to take the first frame. Now Chris, I'm going to put you right on the spot. We were having a little chat beforehand and you said 8-3, 8-4 to England. You're sticking by that. Yeah, I'll go for 8-3, 8-4, simply because Ireland haven't been here for a few years. England are here every year. And they always put in a good performance. Last year they got beat by Wales, but Wales had to play absolutely different class to beat them. A race to eight, best of 15. England have never... been away from the finals here in the Embassy World Team Championship. 
And Jason Bliss gets him off the mark very early. 1-0, England over Ireland. Twist does the business, and it doesn't get any easier for the Irish side either. That's one thing, Chris, you mentioned. Six of the top eight seeds in the men's singles come forth on the English side. And Jason Twist actually made this look simple, didn't he? As much pressure as there is out there in the team event, he waltzed around the table like a stroll in the park. Darren Appleton, nearest camera there. He's another one of the bankers for the England team. And now up against Ireland. It's going to be their England captain, Brady. Robert Brady, up against there. England's Phil Harrison. <coughs> and Harrison will be breaking off to try and increase that early England lead. There's a lot of pride at stake oh, here. Oh, straight into the middle pocket for Phil Harrison. This is a chance for Robert Brady. Another look at it. A little unlucky. Just kicking that yellow and straight into the side pocket. And Phil in his chair right now. I can tell you that Robert Brady didn't look convincing in Ireland's semi-final victory over Scotland. He lost both frames even though Ireland came through victorious, their captain was definitely struggling. Seconds. Red balls in place. These are the chances you've got to take now in these positions, all the reds in the open. Nothing too difficult. Normally counted on very heavily and as the captain's role added pressure on Robert, very familiar face in the team event. I just get the feeling that he's struggling somewhat, not only with his positional play, but his confidence, the way that he's walking around the table. There's no conviction in his stride, nor in his stroke. Already he's made hard work of it. And Phil Harrison is not the sort of player you want to let off the hook. 30 seconds. Little surprise, Robert. Took that ball in the right hand, top pocket there. Could have cut the ball in the left hand corner. Give himself another chance, but decided to go straight for the throat. Trying to clear up in one visit. Real look of concern, too. And you can see here, that one never threatened the corner pocket. <coughs> With that yellow above the red in the middle of the table passed into the corner pocket seconds. bottom right. This is a huge chance for Phil. Great shot there by Phil, Notice, notably. Knocking the red away, so the black goes in the left-hand corner. He's thinking well, he's Phil. You almost fancy Phil to clear up here, Tracy. And if he does, that's just going to be tightening the screws on Ireland. I am also looking at the table the same way I think Chris is, and I reckon that could go for a finish. And yes, the screws are definitely going to come down on Ireland today. A little bit too hard there. Phil wanted to land on the yellow on the top cushion. Just overran the cue ball slightly. We've still got three yellows to get on that ball. So often we talk about pressure, and in the team event, you're really under it. There's many more eyes watching every stroke you play now than just your two. And they live and die on every ball that's potted and missed. I think this is one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen at a world final. There's a, it's a packed audience today. No empty seats there. And they were queuing up very early before the start of this final. 
Now Phil needs a little bit of angle on this, and I think he's got it. Perfect angle there for Phil. As you can see, he'll just run the white off the side cushion, back across, in between the black and the yellow, and play the yellow in the centre bag. This is some performance. Now he's just got to feather this into the side pocket. <laughs> Would like to have been a little straighter on this, I think, Phil. But uh, shouldn't pose any problems. He can get the cue ball right to where he is. He was just cueing. Great shot there by Phil. Perfect position on the black now to take a 2-0 lead for England. And 2-0 confirmed. The one mistake again from Robert Brady and England swoop in to grab their second frame in this race to eight. High fives all around. And as yet, England haven't put a foot wrong. Two chances, two wins. John McMahon is now thrown into the lion's den. Got a red down. 2-0. As was said, this is not the start Ireland wanted. And if ever McMahon was counted on, it would never be a better time for him to put a frame on the Irish side than right fun. now. <coughs> I think he's got a great chance here as John on reds. Just one red that's tied up. 30 but seconds. I think if you see that could be a plant into the bottom right hand corner. Just the one difficult red. And there you can see if he does get a red onto that yellow to pocket the red, it's not quite set. But already a sense of urgency. You can hear how quiet it is. And this is not something that the Irish side wanted to try and promote. 30 seconds. When they're getting off their hands and being very vociferous, you know they're going to be a handle. Just wondering if, if we'll see John stun the red in the centre bag and cut the red below the black and develop the other red. It's quite a difficult shot, but I think it's the only one he's got. It's exactly what he's looking at, Chris. Just stop the cue ball dead and potting this red, and you'll have that angle. And it's all going to be the development of that last red. Well, I think he's just overrun that slightly. It needed to be a perfect angle. If he kisses yellow, the red will go straight over the corner and have perfect position. Now, two parts to this equation. He needs to pocket the red and cannon into that yellow, knocking that red over the other corner. 30 seconds. Well, he got second prize, though. This is going to be very difficult. But just look who he's playing now. See John there trying to hold the, the white so much to get into the other red. He ended up missing the pot, but he's in great control now, covering the bottom two right hand corner pockets. Yes, this is a very difficult position for Mick Hill. One seconds. of the best players in the world on current form. But there's nothing easy about this.
Doesn't want that cue ball going in the pocket. Well, that almost assuredly spells end of frame for England, and Ireland will be slotting one on their score sheet. I just don't understand the shot there, what Mikkel's played. If he left the white in the jaws, the white pass, the other yellow's on the left-hand side. There we see it does pass. John's going to take the red over the bottom left-hand corner. Just hold the white for the red over the right-hand corner. 30 seconds. <coughs> Still got two visits, so he may decide to use them on the black. Just wants to be certain how he does it. see John McMahon just playing a sensible shot there, not too, trying to do anything flash with the white ball. Looks like top right, either in or over the bag here. No danger, and there's the emotion that Ireland was looking to see. Look at John McMahon. Doesn't appear to be too happy with that result. Big win over Mick Hill. Certainly that was one that England would have been counting on and that brings Ireland right back in it. Six frames. I always remember three an old two. Dallas Cowboy football coach. He said, I don't like seeing celebrating in the end zone. I want you to act like you're gonna be there again and that you've been there before. the late, great Tom Landry. That was one of his philosophies. And Keith Brewer right now has been there before. And he's trying to help England get there again. Time out. Time running. Open table for Keith right now. The timeout there was to check and see if the white ball was parked up against the yellow, which would cause a touching ball situation. He would need to play away from that, not causing that yellow ball to move. Thanks, Tracy. We heard the timeout, just weren't sure why it was given. And that's why we've got one of the world's top officials right here in the comm box with us. Little surprised at Keith taking yellow balls here. But I don't think anybody can question his choice. Probably the greatest player ever to play for, world number one for 10 years. But no world titles, Chris. That's one you've got over on him. The one player, the Jimmy White of the pool world, I suppose, the best player never to have won the world title. And Keith a little slower than most players seconds. on the English side. Very measured in his approach. You'll get no mistakes from Keith Brewer that come from carelessness. He thinks everything out. You've got to respect Keith though for what he's done in the game pool. He's won every single title to win apart from the World Championships. And I hope one day he does win it. He's a great ambassador for the game. Well, he's not getting any younger, but he's still alive in the quarterfinals of the singles. So that title 
Still within Keith's reach this year. That's right, Jim. I've got to try and end that run for him. I was waiting for you to say that, Chris. We'll look forward to that one. A man looking for his first world title and a man looking for his second. That's one to watch for on Sky Sports. <coughs> Well, Keith has always had that difficult yellow top of the table glued second. up to the red. This was always going to be a problem ball for him. That's why I couldn't understand that he's played for yellows there, Jim. The reds were all in the open apart from one where the yellow is. Now he's put himself in a little bit of trouble. Has he left that red? Very close. If Brendan McDonough can get through to that red, this is a chance for him. <coughs> Brendan now has got a perfect angle on the red in the centre pocket to develop his bad ball. He'll have all, all five reds in the open after this shot, just the black on the side rail. This Irish team looks like a totally focused side against Scotland. Even though they won that match, it was a very nervy match. It was more a case of mistakes and who made the fewest mistakes as it was anyone seizing the moment and outright winning it. Great shot from Brendan there. He's just developed that awkward red. Problem there, Jim. Didn't play the shot with any conviction. Just dropped straight onto the yellow. The yellow's always going to go towards the other red. Needed to play it a little bit more pace. They still got a good chance here. Turn out. And our referee just cleaning the cue ball, buying Brendan McDonough a little bit more time to think about things. If Ireland can stay with England through this first session. The pressure will be squarely on the English shoulders. Every year they come here expected to win this team championship. And Time every year they have a battle on their hands. Well, there we saw a push shot. But the world rules do allow a push shot. I think if I were refereeing, I would have called a foul there because you have to hit the ball hard when you play a push shot. And as we saw, the white only moved about seven inches. I tend to agree with you, Chris. Uh, the ruling actually does say that you can only call the push shot if you can see it with the naked eye. And it's actually very difficult to call. And if you play it with a bit of pace, you're all right. Actually, it, uh, if anything, the sound was a bit dicey. You can almost hear the double hit in the sound. Good red there from Brendan McDonough. But again, Brendan's not played the ball with any conviction. He's just dropped the ball in and thought, I'll take this long red on. And now you're going to be looking at a bit of an end game in terms of pool. Do you really want to get into an end game with Keith Brewer? Well, the only way to beat Keith is to outpot him. There's nobody on this planet that can beat him at the tactics. He's just in a different league. This was a long ways away. Another look. He just left himself too much to do. He was digging himself a hole. And now Keith Brewer in with a chance to try and secure England's fourth point. And it's not going to be easy. A little short of ideal position little surprise there with Keith. Normally Keith would have just rolled the yellow over the pocket and left the white behind the other yellow on the side cushion. But I think he's trying to take the game to the Irish team here. Put him under even more pressure with a 4-2 lead. Well, Brendan McDonough has 
30 seconds. Just a little more angle than he would have liked, too. Should be taking the cue ball towards the red, and he didn't want that. That's right, Jim. He's just frightened of knocking the red over the pocket to block the black ball. I think he may have to screw this ball off the side cushion and take a long yellow. Keith Brewer with a little bit of flair, and you don't often see that. Very imaginative. Off both sides and back the right side of the table for the last yellow. Great shot there by Keith. Just one more ball here. Yes. Great long yellow there. And look at the look. As he walked around the table, take that. And take that. 4-2, England in front of Ireland. Some great potting from Keith Brewer. Staking England once again to a two-frame advantage over Ireland. You've got to be very happy if you're an English supporter. What you're seeing right now, Ireland are throwing rockets England's way, and England just weather the storm and keep coming back at them. But the mistake from Brendan McDonough allowed Brewer back in. A difficult long red. It was never going to be easy. But that was Brendan's last visit. What a shot here from Brewer, Chris. Played the white there with loads of deep right-hand screw. And what a great pot to get on the black. Couldn't have played the finish any better. Yes, Keith Brewer delighted with his performance. And now it's down to Termit Armstrong to try and halt the English momentum. Darren Appleton will be there to try and carry it on. Dermot's got two off the break. Look at the reds again, Jim. Red and yellow balls popping. Didn't hit the break too hard. Just controlled the white. Pots a red centre bag. And a yellow in the top left. In the semi-final match against Scotland, apart from Tony Holgate, this was the player that I thought looked the most composed and was capable of bringing his A game to the table when it was required. It's all been played. That's right, Jim. When you're under pressure, you've just got to relax. Stand back, look at your options, and just try and get down as though you're playing in practice. I know it's not easy, but when you're under pressure, you've got to take everything into account. This is a big chance for Ireland. If they can get out of this first session only one frame adrift, you just get a feeling that they're going to be in with a chance. There's no reason why they shouldn't. All reds in the open. Going to be playing a plant here slowly, trying to drop that red in and leaving the other one over the pocket. Perfect position here. Just draw the, the white up the right-hand side cushion, playing for the top and red. And this looks like it's going to be 4-3 to England in the interval. Thirty seconds. Tracy with all the sentiment that's out there and so many people expecting England to be holding the trophy at the end of this one. Is it that natural tendency for a lot of fans to support the underdog? I think generally people do, uh, whether it be a singles player or a team. I think also because England have been here so many times that maybe the people are supporting the underdogs for a change. They're just tired of seeing those red waistcoats. Maybe that as well. Maybe next time we'll see some green ones.
30 seconds. You're fancying Australia then, Tracy. <laughs> Not at all. I was talking about the South African side. <laughs> He just overran ideal position here, did Dermot, so he's going to have to slow roll this. And that was a test of queuing. And it was always taking the cue ball into that red, Chris. Now his work has just become about 10 times harder. And there's a man I'm much more accustomed to seeing sat beside me in the com box. Former Irish captain, Tony Holgate, and a real look of concern, and understandably. Dermot can play seconds. a decent shot here. He can play the red into the yellow, leaving the white behind the red, because let's, let's not forget, you have to hit a cushion after contact. He's having a real good look though, Chris, to see if this will just wiggle right down that left cushion He's got a slightly bigger pocket than normal with that yellow there, but there's not much room for error. Very difficult shot, this one. It's there. Straight in, doesn't even touch the yellow. But is there a pocket for the black? There was one from the red for the black. I'm not so sure. But just look at the side he's put on the white to get, the, get it down on the black. I don't know whether this black passes that yellow. It certainly seconds. can't have a full pocket. Well, if he puts the black over the pocket, he's got perfect control of the game. I think he's trying to pop this off, off the yellow. I think I'd be just putting this over the pocket. And with Darren Appleton waiting in the wings, he doesn't want to leave him a chance. Yeah. It's there! What a shot from Dermot Armstrong. What a finish! 4-3, England leads Ireland after session one. And Robert Brady, the Irish captain, is delighted with his team's efforts. Great scenes from the Irish team, 4-3 down. Joe, they're very much in this match. Yes, and it's great to see the Irish still in the match. Um, that frame was critical, though. Uh, they needed to win that to stay in touch, uh, because you know, we were talking about the contrast between the two sides. Yeah. When England win a frame, it's like it's expected. It was like it's a, a job at the office. When uh, Ireland win a frame, it's like they've just won the match every time. I don't know about you, but I love the passion the Irish show. It's, it really adds atmosphere to these championships, and, and it's one of the highlights that, uh, that sort of brings teams like Australia and uh, Kenya and South Africa back every year just to enjoy the, the team event and the atmosphere that's created by okay. teams like Ireland. Absolutely. Let's just take a look at the last couple of shots that have clinched that frame. This is a big, a big shot, the red. Huge. The cheer from the Irish side when this red dropped into the corner pocket was phenomenal. And then the black to follow was just as difficult. And it just, and just to give that suspense, uh, look at the pause here before the black falls. And then the singing takes place again. I don't think Westlife have got too much to worry about, have they? <laughs> <laughs> Great scenes here in Blackpool. Ireland still very much in this match. Welcome back. A great atmosphere here in Blackpool. The Irish have only just stopped singing. We're going to get straight back to the action. At frame eight is Jason Twist up against John Cullen. The Irish training by one frame. It's 4-3 to England. England over Ireland. A very tight-fisted encounter, as one would have expected. And you really have to be impressed with the way that Ireland has set out in this men's team final. A couple occasions, England looked like running away and hiding. And look at the cue ball. And Jason Twist saw that. Nothing he can do to stop that. One more look. Crush that break off. 
And that red coming down and swiping that cue ball into the corner pocket. A cruel twist of fate. But a big chance for the Ireland team. That's John Collum at the table for Ireland. Played terrific in his semifinal match against Scotland. 30 seconds. And this is a rematch of round one where Jason Twist secured the frame against Colum, and this is a chance for Colum to reply. Tracy, perfectly legal, isn't it? After the break, he's played the red on to the yellow. Indeed, Jim, the referee did call open table, which means that the balls are open to play. He can play whatever he likes, except the black, without committing the foul. And the shot he has played is perfectly legal. The ball that he's dropped is now his ball in play. So yellow's seconds. in play. Now how important is it here, Chris? for John Collum to try and dish up. Well, I think John's got to start taking these chances if Ireland are to proceed to win this tournament. Surprised to see that England have changed their format a lot as well. Normally they put Darren Appleton on last in the first session and first in the second session. They've decided to put Jason on using the new format now. Just wondering if they're 30 seconds. a little bit nervous. Yes, just to let our people at home know, after the first session, both teams can change their running order. And that's exactly what they've done. Colin and Jason Twist are back out again. Normally what England does is the player last on is the first out in the second session, and they've gone against the grain. And that's where it's down, I suppose, to the captain, is it? Or is it the manager that does that, Chris? Well, it's both, really. They both have a, have a conversation in the break, uh, deciding who's going to play, who's going to play seconds. first, second, third, up to eight. They can also put another sub in as well. There's the England manager, Richard Ellis, being the manager for the past few years. Uh, this will be his first world title if, he, if England take this. Well, it's a big if right now. Just landed a little low on the yellow there. He wanted to be dead straight. So he could screw up the side cushion up for the top yellow. Now he's got to kiss into the black here, leaving a little bit to look. Or could he just run full it through and flick the red? 30 seconds. Played that well. Everything's still nicely in the open for John. Trouble is now, Jimmy's got to negotiate the white through a path of reds off the top cushion and back down for the yellow. I think I'd be trying to screw off the top cushion with the left hand side. Bring it around the left hand side of the table and pop the yellow in the top right hand corner. Perfectly played there. Yes. Beautiful shot. Controlled that cue ball perfectly. Taps the table to congratulate himself. Couldn't have really played that shot any better. Prime position now to take a four all. And it's anybody's game now. Yes, John. What a performance this is from John Collins. Come on, John. Come on, Jesse. Come on, the black John. to have squared the first eight frames of this men's team final. against the reigning embassy world champion, Jason Twist.
What a turn up this is. Ireland four, England four, and Ireland will be breaking off in frame number nine. And Holgate will be breaking off against Phil Harrison. And look at his eyes. Nine frame, Ireland Not break, leaving that playing surface. He's such a likable fellow as Tony. Always wants to have a good laugh. Now that's something interesting, Tracy. As Tony breaks off in frame number nine and the cue ball disappears. You build up so many relationships of, with all these players. I mean, is it difficult sometimes to remain objective as a referee? It isn't difficult to remain objective. Uh, Certainly the job of a referee is to be indifferent, to be unbiased. If something happens on the table, you call it irrespective, bite down and call the foul. Easier said than done, I suppose, on some occasions, though. Absolutely, but I always stick to the rule, you foul on my table, you foul on my table. I like that, your table. 30 seconds. That's a good way to put it. Bill Harrison benefiting from that in-off from Tony Holgate now. Reds in play, Red and you can see play. the remaining ones. Well, these are all drop-ins here for Phil. Won't be very often you'll see him miss from here. It's even more important this year for the team title, seeing as it's the last Embassy World Pool Championship sponsored by Embassy. It's more important this year than any other year to win it. <laughs> Struggled to the bottom of the pocket. Sigh of relief, certainly from Phil Harrison. He left himself enough angle here, Chris. I think he can make a little angle here because the object ball, the white ball is, is smaller than the red ball and the yellow balls. That way he can make an angle when there isn't one really. This black to once again restore the lead that England has yet to relinquish. A nervy black down and smiles from Phil Harrison. And Tony Holgate can only offer his hand. Unlucky, the cue ball kicked into the middle pocket, but smiles all around for England. It's a race to eight, 5-4 in front of Ireland. And what an emotional player coming forward for Ireland now. John McMahon, if you'll remember in the first session, dropped to his knees after securing the point and he's up against Darren Appleton and Darren will be breaking off a quick look just to make sure everything's touching he wants a good clean split Darren struggled on the breaks the past few years at these world championships he's got a great break on the seven foot tables but as we're now playing an eight foot table on TV he seems to struggle a little bit class player though Look at that. Red and yellow ball popping. Another look at this break off. Kept that cue ball in the middle of the table. Red down and yellow top right. Reds look slight favorite here, I think, Chris. Yeah, I think it would take in reds here. Red balls in twice. Trying to get rid of the top. Top five reds at the top of the table, leaving the one of the bucket to last. Well, this is going to be a real test of nerve for the English side. Their timeout, white ball, going to be cleaned by our official again. 
You've got a brand new pair of white gloves, do you, Tracy? In fact, I'm wearing white, brand new white gloves tend to be a bit of a pain because they're slippery. I tend to try and wear them in a little bit. I actually did it the other day and polish up all the balls. Just a wealth of <coughs> knowledge from a referee's perspective. Great to have you here. It's great to be here, Jim. Thank you. Darren Appleton right now in perfect position to restore the two-frame lead that England enjoyed midway through the first session. But look at the faces in behind Darren. Painted green faces, green hair. No prizes for guessing who they're supporting. Now, Chris, you were looking for a hairstylist uh, a few days ago, weren't you? You might want to check where that gentleman got his done. Yeah, we're going to get my hair done blonde, but couldn't get it done, unfortunately. 30 seconds. So I'll leave it the way it is. Well, that not, that's not Darren Appleton's best effort. Don't know what he was trying to do, possibly get that cue ball down for that red on the top cushion. Yeah, I think he tried to play it with a lot of side, but... As I said before, these new tables, they don't take with running side or check side. Because of the new cloth, they just slide. He's going to need some seconds. effort to regain the position. Quite a few of the England players have just come back from uh, Las Vegas playing over there, playing with nine ball, bigger balls, bigger tables. And I think, this, I think they're struggling with the table. Darren will be happy with that one, covering the pocket. I think he meant to pop the ball, though. If he had potted the ball, we in perfect position. He'd be quite content with that one. Hard to believe the red stayed out, but he did guard that pocket. We were talking about players in America, and Lee Kendall just got back from Las Vegas, did very well in a nine ball, an American nine ball event over there. He told me he finished fourth. 30 seconds. Good result, but so many of these players, as are you, Chris, very adept in other Q sport disciplines. You're a very good snooker player, world ranked, in fact, and you'll be playing on the main tour again next season. We'll be looking for you there. Well, that was a loose effort from. Well, if I have the success, man. if I have the success, what I've had on a pull table, I'll be over the moon. And you know, you've got, you're building an army of fans. And they'll be watching for you there, too. Another look at John McMahon's effort. And what's worse is he's left Darren Appleton a real chance here. Quite fortunate there. He hasn't really left Darren much. He's got a red over the corner, but that, that is his banker, really. He doesn't want to pot that ball. Probably play safe. We'll see bringing the red into the open, leaving John no, no shot on the yellow. Made sure that he couldn't see that yellow on the left cushion. This is what they call attacking safety. Bring your balls into the open while leaving your opponent no shot. A very difficult yellow top right if he is brave enough to take it on. And that's the pocket. 30 seconds. Just wondering if we'll see John try and knock the black to the top cushion, playing a plant. Now has he left that red on the top cushion? If this passes, a real chance for Darren Appleton. And there you can see. No doubt Darren will be trying to float this one into the corner pocket. Well, the kisses up there as well, Jim. I don't think it would have mattered if he had to kiss the ball. He'd have still been on the red, so it's not that lucky. But the white could have sneaked in the middle pocket with a thicker kiss.
I don't think he would have minded had that dropped. Going to need one good positional shot to play that eight. The center pocket on the right-hand side as we look. So just about a half ball hit on the red to bring the cue ball up the left side. These can go wrong when the ball is so far in the jaws such as this red is. This isn't easy. Oh, he's played that beautifully. Center pocket for a 6-4 lead. Confirmation now of that score line. Phil Harrison and Darren Appleton secure two in a row and take England two clear in this best of 15 men's team final. a beaten finalist in the past. They look to go one better this year, but they've never won the Embassy World Team title. And it'll be down to Dermot Armstrong to try and keep their hopes alive. So they hit the break there. No power in the break there. Just went for control and he nearly screwed the white in the top the pocket. And the reds are absolutely perfect here. alerted with that corner pocket. And our first look at the England reserve, Ian Hubbard. Reserves are being called into action in the second session. A solid player. Imagine having him seconds. as your reserve. Well, Ian's had a great year this year. Won a tour event, runner-up in the European Championships. He's probably the calmest person on the English team. Very really likeable play. person. <laughs> There's so much that goes into match preparation. Now, Tracy, I want to ask you a question. I know players will spend time on the practice table. What do officials do before a big match? And how do you prepare for all the pressure of being in front of the TV cameras? 30 seconds. Pressure is definitely something the referee also feels, the tighter the game. Certainly your concentration must be there 100% all the time. Tighter the game, you have to watch everything all the time with just that little bit extra effort. Preparation-wise, I think everybody has a refresher on the rules, make sure they know the tight situations. If there's anything fancy going on, you need to be able to call it in a split second. Are there often rule changes that you have to stay abreast of? Well, there's, as far as I know, a convention going on this weekend uh, where the referees are getting together and they're considering having a look at some of rewording of the rules, not necessarily changing them, which would make the players' lives a little bit easier as well. But they don't change that often. I think it would confuse everybody if we change them every four, four years as a, a whole. Minor changes to make life easier. 30 seconds. Great shot there by Ian. <laughs> Slightly unfortunate to knock the other red safe who try to get the black in the open. We've still got a good chance here. I don't know whether he's got the angle on this red, Chris. Obviously, he's had a quick look at it. I thought he might be able to play that into the left center and draw the cue ball back and dislodge that yellow, but it doesn't look on. He's just got to be careful. If he screws into the yellow, the yellow doesn't go in front of the black again. Mary tried to cheat the pocket. That's what cost that miss. Tried to force a little angle that wasn't there. And these match tables, very unforgiving. Dermot Armstrong played a terrific frame in the opening session. A clearance in one visit, and he's got an opportunity again here. Given that we're getting a little closer to the finish line, a little more pressure.
of just weighing things up. He wants to be absolutely certain in his mind how he wants to remove these yellows. Little surprise, Dermot he isn't playing the snooker here behind the yellow on the left hand side cushion. He's too straight on the bottom one to get any kind of angle. I think he's going to play the snooker, Chris. Time out. No, Camera in. Players at the moment just checking to make sure that the yellow ball is not touching on the cushion. The legal shot does require to make contact with the cushion after the two balls have made contact. Timeout. Total snooker. Time running. Referee just calling timeout again, Tracy, just to uh, award, well, award or let the player know there's a total snooker. Just to confirm the total snooker, which is exactly what it is, the total snooker, you cannot see either side of your ball to cut it, which does relax the ruling of having to make contact of a cushion seconds. after he has made contact with his object ball. Quite fortunate there, covered the yellow into the top pocket. If he hadn't covered the, uh, covered the yellow there, he had a quite a simple clearance. But now, it's a different story. The run of the balls. Always a talking point, regardless <coughs> of who wins and loses. 30 seconds. Used the ball very nicely, Chris. He looks very solid, doesn't he, this young man? That's right, Jim. I think he's an ex-snooker player, or he does play a snooker. He tends to cue the ball very straight, stays down on his shot. He's got a square stance. Yes, all signs of a snooker background. That one yellow top of the table seconds. that's concerning Dermot right now. Just look how straight his back arm is. Absolutely dead straight. thinking in this that yellow is available into the top right corner if you could take the cue ball into an area to be able to attack it somewhere in this area then that yellow would be available but again 30 seconds what Dermot's problem is leaving an angle on one of these yellows to get that cue ball up there almost feel that he was making things a little more difficult. He was taking a lot of time and that uncertainty took his concentration away from the pot. Being quite fortunate there though to cover the pocket blocking the red into the bottom right hand corner. We'll probably see him cover the top right hand corner here because that yellow at the top of the table does not go in any pocket if he covers there. 30 seconds. It's all about mind games in these situations. You have to think what your opponent's going to play after you've played your shot. Now, is he going to try and get this red in behind that yellow? If he can just catch the left jaw as we look. There you see, Ian's in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> Not 
a lot of choices here for Ian either. Chris, really, he's just got to throw the gauntlet down and develop his red, but <laughs> might not be a bad move to flick that black into an open area, too. That's right. What can he do from here, Jim? I think he'll just push the red into the center of the table and push the white into the top cushion. Can't really do anything else. You've just got to hope that Gavin makes <laughs> a mistake. He might do that just to get that black away from that corner pocket the yellow is guarding. Right now, Dermot Armstrong is in the driver's seat. 6 4 the score line. Just to remind you, it's a best of 15. The first team to 8 will be hoisting the Embassy World Team Trophy. This is a lot better shot than people probably think at home because he's probably left him a slight edge on the red. That means he's got to hit a cushion after contact. If he'd have totally snookered him, that means he wouldn't have had to hit a cushion. Well, the beauty of Dermot's position here is he doesn't have to attack. It's a lot easier to defend his position than it is for Ian Hubbard to defend his. Do you prefer to referee these kind of frames, Tracy, or attacking frames? I think the defensive kind of game is definitely something you've got to pay attention to. Seconds. I think having watched a lot of pool this week, I think the attacking games are much better. The faster the game, the better. The player tends to show off his skills a whole bunch better that way as well. How are the matches allocated, Tracy? Do you uh, draw for the matches? Not at all. We have a body of referees that attend this tournament, and there's a senior referee that draws up a roster, and we all work pretty much equal shifts, equal rotations. And out of that group that has been here this week, or for the last two weeks, the senior referee has chosen a six of us to be available for these finals today to be fair that's a bad shot there what he's played it looks a good shot because he snookered him but we'll see Ian play off the side cushion top Fair cushion enough. and snooker him behind the red on the top left hand side of the table a little messy but off the two cushions up in behind that red This is where thinking in front what your opponent is going to do helps. I don't think Gavin thought about this seconds. shot. And more importantly, as you said already, I don't know if Ian sees this, but I'd sure be playing it, especially with the yellow there. This, this is a daft shot, really, because the red could go anywhere. There you see the red go down to the bottom side of the cushion, giving Gavin a great chance now to clear up. Not the two cushions, a full contact on that red, and he would have all of a sudden been in control of the frame. Seconds. It's Dermot Armstrong at the table right now, just surveying the situation. <coughs> no, no. That's 
Certainly the cue ball to be cleaned. Obviously not happy with the contact between white and object ball, Tracy. The white ball definitely picks up uh, little bits of chalk. Obviously the harder they cue, it leaves little bits of chalk on the board, doesn't, ri doesn't run properly, doesn't spin if you're trying to spin it out. And now requesting the rest. Again, affords Dermot Armstrong a little bit more time to think about his next shot. That's right, Tracy. The white ball needs to be cleaned quite often in pool and in snooker because it does pick up dirt. Similar with cricket, we clean the ball on every over. He's a little heavy. circle where he wanted to be and he's just slightly overrun ideal position he can still see this yellow and I believe enough to pot it just remember what happened earlier Jim when he got himself in a bad situation cut the ball straight into the bottom corner and played up this is a real big shot and an seconds. even bigger moment for both Dermot Armstrong and Ireland. Trailing 6-4, they can ill afford to drop this frame and put England on the hill of victory. Just glancing over at the time to see if he's got a 30 second call or if he's going to land up in a time foul situation. What a shot from Dermot Armstrong there. Bumps the block over the bottom corner and this to pull one back for Ireland. At 6-5, another look. Great shot under extreme duress. mark. Dermot Armstrong brings one back for Ireland. It's England six, Ireland five. I had a word with a few of the English players before coming out here and they were ready for a tough battle. They always have trouble with Ireland, they said. During the round robin stages, a 12-9 win for England, and the cue ball straight into the corner pocket for Mick Hill. He really has been struggling with his game throughout the team event. Just not a lot positive happening for Mick at this moment in time. More enthusiasm on those faces. England team look very worried there. Phil Harrison chewing seconds. his fingernails. Keith and Darren just sat back. They know they're under pressure, and it, if Ireland keep punishing them, they're going to end up losing. Brendan McDonough Brendan. choosing yellows. Yellow balls in play. Now Chris, you're waving. You didn't agree with that selection. You thought he should have gone reds. He should have definitely gone reds there. Simply because reds were more in the open. He didn't have any reds that were tied up. There's two yellows and two reds to the left of the table. And the bottom yellow is tied up. Can't do anything with it. There you see a bad miss from Brendan. He just looks a very nervous player. That's right, Jimmy. Looks, he looks the most nervous of the Irish 30 team. Seconds. 
and he's, he's probably had a, quite a lot of chances. In fairness, so to Brendan McDonough, he finished very high <coughs> in the overall rankings. In the top 10, in fact, with a 72% winning percentage. 26 out of 36 frame wins in the round robin stages. <coughs> that just shows you, though, what the TV and the lighting and the pressure of this world team title can do to you. When somebody seconds. can win 72% of the games, then all of a sudden they start struggling. It's far too straight on this red. There's nothing easy about this. And I don't think McHill is going to be able to attack for much longer, even if he does go at this red. Yeah, this is, uh, this is probably the most worst I've ever seen Mick play, to be fair. Known Mick for quite a lot of years, and he's probably the most consistent player about at this game. Always in the quarters, semis, final. 30 seconds. Actually won three UK tours back to back last year. One of the bright young prospects on the English side, along with Gareth Potts, even though Mick has been around, it seems like forever. He left himself too much to do there. <laughs> trying to force the issue. was never in the pocket. And the more that Mick Hill struggles, the more confident that Brendan McDonough is going to get. Well, I just can't believe what I'm watching from Mick Hill. Like I said, he just, he never makes a mistake in other tournaments. He's just, I think he's a pressure that's got to him. He knows how much it means for the England team to win this title. But every year, England come here as the team to beat. They're on everybody's dartboard. And that just means they accept that role and the pressure that goes along with it. So we'll see Brendan try and take the yellow off the red. That'll open the other yellow for the center pocket. Seconds. Poor shot there from Brendan. Didn't take enough time, I don't think, on the shot. It was a lot more difficult than it looked. He just looks like a player surrounded by confusion as well. traveling around the table here by both players. Speaking of traveling, I mean, a lot of people seconds. don't realize, Tracy, do they, that back in South Africa, going from city to city to compete, it's not like it is in England, is it? You guys, are they're day trips. Indeed, Jim. Uh, South Africa being a whole bunch bigger than England is, we do travel all over the country to host our national tournaments. And I come from Cape Town, and. I know the junior championship that's about to come up is up in Pretoria, and that's going to be a 15-hour drive for us, straight driving. So it must be difficult to maintain a high level of competition. We try and get there the day before so that you can at least get some sleep in. Uh, we do try and go up in a bus seconds. or at least up in convoy in vans or whatever the case may be. And do you have a tour as such? Uh, the, I know the embassy tour in England is uh, is the tour that hosts many of the major events. This would probably be the tour that our national sides do come on. We don't have a national tour as such. I know the, the ladies team get invited to play at the men's national tournament as an invitation side, which is a great experience for them. And they feature quite well on the rankings against the men. Yeah, I noticed that South Africa has started to produce some 
results. And I don't think it's going to be long before you're going to be seeing some of your seconds. players in these major finals. I would say so as well. Be good to see. Back to center stage here. And Mick Hill still seems to have trouble finding the handle on this match. And I think his shake of the head tells you all you need to know. Yeah, I think Mick Hill was in the bar too, too long last night. He's really struggling today. Darren Appleton. Obviously, not real thrilled with the way things are transpiring here on the main table. And no one would be more concerned, I'm sure, than the man in the loneliest chair. And that wasn't Brendan McDonough's best shot. This is a little bit more familiar in Brent terms of what we saw against Scotland, isn't it? Yeah, there were a lot of mistakes in the Scotland Island game. That's why I predicted an 84-83 win for England, because they just could not put a ball. They seconds. were taking three and four chances of frame. But now it looks a whole different side. They look as though they've raised a game against a better team. And that has been very apparent. What a great shot he's played there. Could he have played that any better? Positive note, the weight on that yellow was everything there. <coughs> Jason knows that he's played his two matches. 30 seconds. All he can do is wait, watch, and pray. can offer a bit of a smile but you and I know Phil quite well he's uh, he smiles more than he doesn't anyway hey Chris that's right that's right Jim Phil's a great great lad one of my best mates I've played him quite seconds. often on the UK tour and to beat him you have to play unbelievable I mean the, the all England team they're such a class team if you look at the rankings I mean the rankings speak for themselves You've got six out of the top eight players in the world playing in the team. I don't know if that's helped McHill's cause or not. There's a pocket there. I think he was trying to just get that yellow out of the jaws. He may well have stuck it in a little further. I think the England team are as surprised as, as I am what what they're watching, they just can't believe what they're watching. The best player in the world is probably playing the worst. Is he gonna play the plant here? Gotta be careful. Doesn't want that yellow to feather over and hide itself behind one of those reds. situation for Brendan is he knows that even if a miss did creep in McHill would have to develop those two reds in the bottom right well Brendan's just got to concentrate on putting the yellow here he'll be automatically on the black this is a big shot Can they feel a victory? Eight deposited. Brendan McDonough brings Ireland one step closer to the finish line. 6-6. Six, six. The first 12 frames have been shared. And England under immense pressure.
We haven't seen the best of Robert Brady yet. Has he saved it for when it's going to be needed most? 6-6. Six, six. Ireland to Brent. We'd like to have that stroke over. Open table. Now, how many times have we seen the white fight off the break in this tournament? Tried to control the white there, not putting as much power as he could have done into the shot. But went straight into the corner pocket. And the reds look very inviting. We'll see Gav uh, Gareth try to leave an angle here on the reds to develop the black. Red ball's in play. Landed a little bit straight there, but I think he can still punch the white through and bring the black off the side cushion. Just passes the yellow, and as you said, Chris, not a lot of angle, but he's going to try and force this and develop the black. Just got to be careful, doesn't pop the white in the center bag if he flicks off the black. Well, the way that's why he should have developed the black. The way he was queuing, it looked like he was going to put a little bit of muscle behind that one. Well, for me, when you have a perfect angle to bring a ball up a cushion, I think you have to take it, take the ball by the horns, put all your eggs in one basket and go for the shots. Now, if he clears these three reds, he's got a tough black down the cushion. Which, if he had knocked it off, he wouldn't have needed the tough black down the cushion. 30 seconds. Good shot there, though, from Gareth Potts. He's got a nice angle on this red. As we again see him forcing that cue ball off that bottom cushion and back out into the center of the table. But he's got the angle to drop onto the last one. Yes, Boy, the way this young man's playing, Chris, he's going to be on the English side for a long, long time. 19 years of age. And what a future he has. He yeah, is a great player, he's Gareth. Future world champion, in my opinion. And it won't be too long before he does win it. This eight for a 7 6 advantage. And it's there. Gareth Potts, the youngest on the English side has done his very best to keep the English hopes alive for yet another title. 7-6 in the race to eight. And the captain, Lee Kendall, steps into the forum, requiring one more frame win to hoist the trophy they have held on many occasions in the past. And up against him is the Irish reserve, Paul Noonan. We didn't see him in round one. Talk about jumping from the frying pan into the fire. To be fair though, Jim, Lee Kendall didn't have a shot in his opening frame. England were beaten by Wales last year in one of the few occasions where they have tasted defeat. Eager to try and regain the embassy team championship. There is so much pride involved here. We've already said there are very few empty seats in this arena, such as the following for team play. And Lee Kendall all set frame 14. Would you look at the Reds there? Open table. The captain needs to put a captain's performance in if England are to win this team title. And if it goes to seven each, guess who's on last for England? The man who won it last time in the deciding frame, Keith Brewer. Yes, a couple years ago, I remember it well. 
but it's down to Paul Noonan. Got so many options here. You just know that Paul Noonan 30 seconds. wants to secure this one. This is the most pressure he will have felt in his career. Snaps that one a bit, Jim, so he can jump up off the queue very quickly. Just a little bit of pressure there. He's never played in a situation like this before. the red staying on the table and the fox yeah. gains control of that pocket that's a great shot there by Lee but now you'll see Paul Noonan not please yellowing to give him a deliberate foul give Lee two shots but what can Lee do from there Luke the red, Luke the red. No emotion whatsoever. And in the end, offered an apology to Lee. But he'd rather be on the giving than the receiving end of that for two of his break. But you can see, again, a very nervy effort from Paul Noonan. In fairness, he didn't play in round one. So he hasn't had a chance to get his feet wet in this. Now you'll probably see Lee either drop the yellow onto the red, giving him two visits with the white on the bottom cushion. Or Lee will probably try and double the black over to the yellow over the opposite side of the table. Another master of the tactical game is Lee Kendall. I think you'll probably see Lee pop the red, giving giving Paul two visits and leaving him just a red on the top cushion to see. 30 seconds. I think that's the shot I'd be playing from this situation. Bear in mind, Chris, that what he must be careful of is not leaving his opponent with the foul snooker, giving him the option to play the white ball from bulk, leaving him open on his reds. To me, that's a poor shot there from Lee. I think the black passes the yellow. So Paul can use his two visits. Well, it's difficult to tell, possibly off the right-hand job, but he certainly hasn't completely blocked off the pocket. But what about the two reds on the side cushion, Jim? Will one of the reds pass the yellow to open the seconds. black pocket up? He may be forced to try and again contain Lee Kendall. If this red passed down the right-hand cushion, Chris, I think you'd see him take it on to open that pocket. But obviously it doesn't go. You can see that other red obstructing the clear path down to that pocket. I think he's going to just try and feather this. too sure obviously trying to attack from that position but the two visits quickly turn back over to Lee Kendall and I think Lee senses he's got an opponent on the ropes that's why Jim I can't see Lee missing from here likes to take his time take all shots into consideration work his plan to leave his last ball for the black and I think he'll be leaving the yellow over the pocket for the last ball for the black everything in the open here for Lee Kendall 
and how fitting it would be for England if the captain were to strike the last ball in the 2003 Embassy World Team Championships, the last year seconds. for MB's Embassy sponsorship in this event. Perfect position here for Lee. Can't really see him making a mistake from here. Just about holding yourself together now, taking in all the pressure and cueing the balls. And Lee, no stranger to center stage either. So he won't be overwhelmed by this. Not at all. You can also tell by his body language in general that he's on the attack. If you've been watching him previously in the frame on his defense, he's got very close body language. You can see it when you're standing next to him on the table as well. Beginning of the end, I fear for Ireland. Keith Brewer in the background looking right down Lee's cue. And he knows now, as does everyone else. That the Embassy 2003 Team Championship goes again to England. The dominant England side victorious over a very game challenge from Ireland. 8-6 the final scoreline and what could have been a fantastic finish for Team England. A sign of emotion from the England team as the England captain seals victory. No emotion whatsoever from the Irish side. Joe, that was a wonderful match. Yes, it was. Um, in the end, England proved too strong, as we predicted. They, uh, they just had too many big names coming into those last few frames of, uh, of that session. Well, what was going through your mind? Because Ireland just kept on coming back at them. Yeah, they really made a fight of the match. It was, it was excellent to, to see. Um, but um, it was always really hard to, uh, to try and see how Ireland were really going to get up. Ireland got back to 4-4, four -four, and then Tony Holgate had a little bit of bad luck on his break. He went in off, England took the lead again, Ireland came back at them, but you, you always said to me all, all the way, weren't you, the running, England's last two or three players were going to be too strong. Yes, and when you have someone like Tony Holgate not win a frame, and uh, their captain Brady do the same, it's very difficult to get up against a team like England. Okay, well uh, Alan Hughes is in the arena at the moment, just trying to get the players sorted, to have a quick chat with him, I think he's in the arena now, so uh, let's hear what he has to say. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what another wonderful final we've had. Will you put your appreciation, please? Let's hear it for both teams, yes? Thank you very much indeed. And first of all, a very quick word with uh, Robert here. I know a very emotional moment for you, Robert. Emotional moment for everybody here in the Irish team. Uh, the last time you played here, I think you played in a final, and it was by the old frame. This time, just as close. It was a wonderful match, but you're back. You're back again. You've been quiet for a couple of years. You're back again, and I know that's where you're going to stay. How are you feeling at this moment with the rest of the side? Is it an upper or a downer? Well, I think that goes without saying it's a downer. I just I want to thank the lads to put in a super performance the whole way through the championship. Uh, England are a great side. They deserve to win today. They played very well. Um, they're not. They're a great team. They've won the World Championship so many times. I thought today it might be our day. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't to be, but I'd just like to thank all our supporters that came over. And we, it was close, but we we're still a step short, but uh, well done to England. Robert, it's an upper. It's an upper. You've done so well. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a hand. The team from Ireland, tremendous, tremendous. Lee, this has been another tremendous uh, performance from the England team. Eleven times you've been in the final, eight times you've won it. What do you got to say? Well, everyone's special. Another great match with Ireland again. Uh, the odd frame again in it, and the lads were brilliant. This side's a brilliant side. It's the best Irish team I've ever seen, and I think we should all give them a round of applause for how well they played in this final. And what can I say about my team again? The question was asked, we're the favourites coming to the tournament. 
It's been a long week, and again, they've done the goods. Brilliant performance, lads. Fantastic. So they have. Ladies and gentlemen, Team England. <laughs> and now, I'm going to ask you to welcome the presentation party. It's Peter Manzi, Marketing Manager for Imperial Tobacco Limited, accompanied by a tournament director, George Harwood. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's very brief, it's very simple. The championship trophy this year, the world champions are Team England. <laughs> and a magnum of champagne as well to celebrate for the team. Great scenes in the arena. That's the sixth time the England team have won at this event. Commiserations to Ireland, a very emotional side. No doubt they'll be back next year stronger and better than ever. That's all from us here in Blackpool for the team event. The next time you join us will be the men's individual. Until then, goodbye.